Ladies and gents, yes, sir. All things covered. Man, I'm super geek, super excited for this episode. Patrick Peterson, Brian McFadden, Pat P, you fired up? Yes, sir. Let's go, baby. Man, listen here, man. I don't know if there's another podcast that has had the amount of Hall of Famers that we've had the luxury of talking to and having fun with. But guess what? Our listeners and our viewers, <laughs> we don't stop. We got another Hall of Famer for you right now. Four-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Pro Bowler, four-time All-Pro, 51 books, as in mm. interceptions, in a time where they weren't throwing the ball 40 to 50 times like they're doing nowadays. He was still picking them off. A pro, pro football Hall of Famer played for the best organization in professional sports, the Pittsburgh Steelers. No other then the great, the living legend, Donnie Shell, is joining us here. All things covered. <laughs> hey, Donnie, how you doing? How you feeling? Doing good, B Mac. That's the, hey, man, I had to take you out, man, for just on my speaking engagements for the introduction. I'm, I'm gonna get him fired up. Now. I, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get him fired up for you, man. But it's it's easy when it's so deserving. It just it's just so genuine and so authentic when it's deserving and. You know, you've paved the you paved the way for guys like myself and Pat P in regards to secondary play. And and I felt like it was only right to get you on to share your story, because you talk about the safety position being a joystick, a a do it all type play in the secondary. You were doing that in a time was it in a time when it wasn't really a thing like it is nowadays. So, man, it's a pleasure having you on. There's so much we can talk about, and we will. So our listeners, our viewers, please stay tuned. It's going to be a fun ride. Make sure you buckle up. So started off. Now, we all know you were you were a part of the Steel Curtain defense, right, in Pittsburgh. But before you got to the Steelers, a little birdie told me during your senior year in high school, your defense was super good, super dominant as well. Is it true you guys didn't allow one touchdown? Your senior year, and if so, how was that possible? That's correct, man. We we uh we were defensive minded, uh, although we played both ways uh, uh, during that time. We played both ways, but defensively, man, we were seriously, seriously serious about defense. You weren't gonna run the ball, and you weren't gonna throw the ball on us. So we had a great defense. And on the offensive side of the uh, ball, Donnie, you say you guys played both sides of the ball. What position did did you play on the offensive side of the ball? It, this should be a trivia question when I give you the answer. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a wait, minute. Wait. I, I, I want to be good in trivia. <laughs> now, I, uh, Pat P, Pat I'll, P, give you, I, I'll give you a guess. I'll give both of you guys guesses. I'll, I'll say quarterback. <laughs> I'm going to say quarterback, Pat P, because Donnie had quick feet. So, you know, back in those times, he probably used to run a little. They might have used to run that option. You know what I mean? Yeah, that triple, triple option with three backs in the backfield. Yeah. Well, that's what you got, Pat? P. If, if, if oh. you get if you get it, I'm gonna buy you dinner the next time we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in Pittsburgh together. Okay, what you got, Pat? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm gonna go out the ordinary, man. I'm gonna go receivers with 51 picks. Oh. Wow, unbelievable! And and the answer is offensive guard. Wow, hmm? all state offensive guard. Oh yeah, you were all state. Uh, Dang. Well, I, I, oh, hey, I, go I would have never got that one. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> you can put that in for, in for your trivia. You played offensive, <laughs> and you were all state at guard. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, wow. boy, he mm. was a he was a he was a terror. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Well, speaking about unfamiliar territory, with you playing on the offensive side of the ball, offensive guard, you went undrafted. In mm. '74, out of South Carolina, HBCU, did, South Carolina State. Yeah, what South Carolina State. Yeah, there? get that state, get that state in there. Yeah. My bad, South Carolina State. My bad, South Carolina State. No, no problem. <laughs> my, my daughter went to Carolina. Out of South Carolina State in '74. <laughs> but what did you think your future would hold uh, uh, before the Pittsburgh Steelers called you? Yeah, you, you, you know, um, I had no inkling I would ever play uh, professional football. I was inspired by my high school coach, Coach Lefty Johnson. Um, to be a, a teacher and a coach. Uh, he, he so much built into our lives off the field. That's what I wanted to do. So um, I had no inkling I, I, go, I was going to play uh, professional ball. I had been to school, had got my degree, and was going to go back and do some teaching and coaching. And uh, end up, uh, Bill Nunn came down and signed me as an undrafted free agent. 
Mm. And also, too, Steelers. yeah, speaking of South Carolina State, I think it's only right that we definitely give HBCU some flowers in South Carolina State. And one of your teammates was Harry Carson, right? That's, Standout that's, linebacker for the Giants. Yes. Like, what, the, what, the, what type of dominant performances you and Harry was putting on when you were down in Orangeburg, South Carolina for South Carolina State? And, and not only that, we had Barney Chaffin's play with the Denver Broncos. Oh, oh I forgot. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> and, Mick, and, and Mickey Sims played tackle for the Cleveland Browns. So y'all had so four we, pros. <laughs> wow. So so we had we had we had an outstanding defense. Uh, mm. like in high school, uh SC State was known for their defense, man. We ran the ball back in the day in the early 70s, but uh defense, we're gonna we're gonna come up and we're gonna make plays, man. Yeah, okay. Well, hey, well, let's Matt, keep it in. Matt, What's what you Matt, got, Pat? Real quick, I got a quick question. Sorry to jump off top. No, whatever. I like feel, when we go off the rails. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about because we always talk about HBC, HBCUs? And what Prime did in his short time, and going back to where when you was in college in the seventies, how do you think it has evolved? Because there's a ton of Hall of Famers that came out of HBCUs. How do you feel that the HBCUs has evolved into to get today's game? And also, two part question: How do you feel about Prime success that he had at the HBCUs and what he's the platform that he's what he's been able to put them on, um, leaving yeah. to go to Colorado. We, we, uh, Pat, we, we come a long way, man. Uh, we, mm. we come a long way. And we were blessed because it was time during the immigration. We couldn't go anywhere else. We couldn't go to the PWI, predominantly yeah, white schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to stay there. So we had the talent. Uh, it, people just didn't know about us. Uh, but we had we had the talent. But it, it was um, it was good. Uh, you know, SC State with the Bulldogs, and um, I, I think I, I, when I came in the league, I brought a lot of the, the Bulldog tenacity, we, we wanted to call it, uh, to the NFL. Uh, that's what we call it at SC State. Um, we, we had some good coaching, and I had uh, Coach Willie Jefferson was my coach. But Dion, I'd like to give a shout-out to Dion. Dion took us up to another level. Yeah. I mean, he, he brought the spotlight. He brought the national spotlight to HBCU uh, universities. And I want to thank him for that. And I, I appreciate all the sacrifices he did to do that. Mm -hmm. No doubt. No doubt. And, and you know, throughout your time at South Carolina State, as we mentioned, you got drafted. Uh, you got the call uh, to the Pittsburgh Steelers. For our listeners and our viewers that are checking us out, we appreciate your support so much. But I got a, I got a, I got a question for you or, 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 or a challenge for our viewers and our listeners. In our comment section, please comment, please. We love reading your comments. If you guys can name a better rookie class than this 1974 rookie class of the Pittsburgh Steelers, share it with us. That 74 Steeler rookie class included five Hall of Famers. Lynn Swan, Jack Lambert, John Stallworth, Mike Webster, Donnie Shell. Like I said, I challenge anyone who's watching us on YouTube or listening to us on their podcast platform to find another rookie class that is better than the one that I just named in that 74 rookie class, Steeler class, and we'll have a debate. But question for you, Donnie, being a part of that class, right? Five Hall of Fames. I don't know if that's ever been done before, and it probably won't be done again. When did it click that you guys were beyond a special group? And you had a collection of talent. We, we really didn't think of, uh, of ourselves in that manner when we were playing. We, we just a bunch of guys that came from different parts of, of the country and, and was coming together uh, to be a team. And um, it, it's amazing. Uh, guys were very talented athletically, but they were good people. Mm. Not only did they have talent athletically, but they were good people. And we, the relationships we built back then uh, with Mel Blunt and uh, with, uh, with JT Thomas, Joe Green, uh, John Stallworth, uh, we yeah. played against each other in college. We still have those relationships today, 40, 40 and 45 years uh, later. So that, mm. that's what really came out of that. Ah, that, I mean, that's, that's special. Five Hall of Famers, man, in a rookie class, man. And you guys were paired up with other Hall of Famers. You talk about Mel Blunt. Right. <laughs> Joe, man, shoot, boy, woohoo. Boy, that's tough right there, man. And shots out to JT Thomas as well, Florida State alumni, who's the first African-American to ever play 
football for the Seminoles, man. JT's a good guy. But Pat P, man, yeah. it, I, them some greats yeah. right there. But them goat on top hey. of goat. And that those are some greats right there. And and like Donnie just alluded to, one of the greats I'm about to bring up and Mel Blunt. We uh, had Mel on the podcast um a while ago. And he once yep. told us that he thought that the 97, I'm just sorry, the 19. 19- 76 teams was uh, was the best squad that he's ever been on. That the one that didn't win. win yeah, yeah. The, the the team that didn't win the Super Bowl, who lost the conference championship to the at the time the Raiders. How do you when you look back at it? How do you feel about the the 1976 team? I, I agree. I, I, I never disagree with Mel Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, uh, Mel, 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 kind of took, Mel was my buddy, man. He took me on my uh, on his wing, man, my rookie year, and uh, outstanding defensive back. It was a quick story about Mel Blunt it was in training camp, and uh, Stallworth and Swan was killing everybody. <laughs> he walked, he walked over to me, and said, "Hey, Donnie, neither one of these guys will catch a pass on me today in one on one." I said, no, man, come on, man. Swan can jump out of the sky. You mean Star Wars can lean back and catch all the incredible passes? You mean neither one of them going to catch a pass in, in, in our seven on six, one-on-one drill? No, nobody. <laughs> man, what look, happened? He shut him down. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> no, he, he looked over me. I, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me the great Mel Blunt came out and said, hey, he not giving him a pass that those he, two he all not, he he not, he not, I said, I, I, I don't I don't believe it. He looked over, I told you so. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but but wow. Mel was my mentor, man. He took mm. me on my wing, man. You know, when you come out of uh, high school and, and college and you're the captain of the team of, of everything and you get yep. all that playing time, and I found myself sitting on the bench in 1974 as a rookie playing special mm. teams and nickelback and mm-hmm. on the goal line. I was getting a little discouraged. And this this big six four guy, tall, like guy come over across the room and said, Hey Rook. I said, I said, yeah. I said, who me? I didn't know me. I didn't know me. He said, Yeah, you. He said, We're going to dinner tonight. Mm. You know, I'm a businessman. I said, I said hey, you buying? <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, Yeah, come on, you going to dinner. So he he took me to dinner, man, and I was getting down on myself, and uh, because I just never sit on the bench, man. High yeah, school right. pee wee ball, yeah, and um, I was getting discouraged. And I said, "Mel, you know," he said, "Donnie, I, look," but they the, pre- the two previous years they got knocked out of the playoffs by Miami mm-hmm. and Oakland, and they had their jaw set when I got there in '74. He said, "Look, Donnie, you're doing a good job." On the special team, I never seen anybody play special teams like you. I never seen anybody cover like you. You're doing an outstanding job, you know, nickelback and on goal line defense. And and here, this, here, where he gave me an example of, of being a teammate. He said, if if everybody do their job, Donnie, we're gonna go to the Super Bowl. That's our goal. But everybody got to do their job. And I promise you this. You're so good on special team. If when you go down and you make that tackle at 25 or 30 yard line. On that series, they won't they won't even score. I said, man, you talking about this is the National Football League. You talking about they ain't scoring. I right. said, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. in with that. <laughs> so he used the example to bring me into the team concept, man. So everybody got to do their job. And and I didn't really want to start. I just want somebody to tell me, you know, I, I was doing a good job on the team. So he he really encouraged me. So um I learned a great lesson about being a teammate. No, and that's a steal away. You know what I mean? I had a similar experience my rookie year with Jerome Bettis uh, during OTAs. He was like, Rook, you know, he said Florida State. He's like, Florida State. And I'm looking like, who he talking to? <laughs> and, and invited me and the rest of the rookies out, you know, to uh, do Staley House for a night of just playing video games and cars and eating and fraternizing. And that's what the steal away is all about. And, yep. and, you know, you talked about that conversation you had with Mel Blunt uh, in regards to doing your job so you can get to the uh, the pinnacle of pinnacles in regards to the championship. When you arrived, the Steelers were uh, right there on the cuffs of greatness, you know, from what Chuck Noll was building. Building. What were your first impressions of the great Chuck Noll? Uh, a lot of respect. One, that he he, he knew what he, were, he was doing, um, and he was a great communicator. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he said, uh, I remember the statement he made, man. He, he said, well, if you're waiting on me to motivate you, you're in trouble. <laughs> you got to motivate yourself. 
Mm -hmm. So he was looking for guys who were self-motivated. But he was a great teacher, man, great teacher of technique. Uh, uh, I learned a lot about supporting the run and the run techniques and, and different different sort of things of that nature. But he was a very intelligent guy, man, very smart, beyond his years. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. But, well, I'm going to take you back real quick, Donnie. Um, we all know that the media was not how it is today. But how do you remember – how Super Bowl Nine was portrayed to be between the the, skill, the steel curtain and the uh, purple uh, the purple people eaters. Man, they they, they are like we weren't going to win the game. Man, they said, "Well, well, Minnesota been here before." I said, "But they didn't win." <laughs> True statement. <laughs> True I statement. Said, I, I said yeah. they, they they didn't win. Oh, you know they what they got experience. They got the purple people eaters. That type Alan said, Page and the rest yeah. of them. I said, but they lost. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so they were really playing them up, and they they, they didn't think we were going to even have a chance, man. But uh, they they uh, they hadn't confronted the the, the, the seal curtain yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and two ultimate probably two of the best nicknames you can have in regards to a, a right. defense. The Purple People right. Eaters and the Steel Curtain, Super Bowl Nine. Thank you. I love that. I, they should bring back nicknames for defenses nowadays, man, like yeah. I used to have in the 70s. That was, that was a cool little thing. I like that. I like that. Uh, let's go back before you actually got to Pittsburgh. 1970, the first overall selection by the Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Bradshaw. Uh, you know, but he didn't start his rookie campaign. Um, but eventually got into that lineup. When you got there, when did you realize that Terry was the guy that can lead the Steelers to a championship level of success? Man, this 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 dude could throw the ball 70 yards, man. He had a bullet of an arm. And, yeah. and also, he, uh, people don't know, he, he was a great scrambler. He did not he did it mm-hmm. by necessity, but he was a great scrambler also. But when, when you can throw the ball on a line, uh, out cut, going 15, 20 yards, and, and then running out, mm-hmm. and then and, and, I said, you know what? I'm going to intercept this ball. But you know what? I never could get there, man. Wow. <laughs> I saw the break. I saw him winding up. He, he threw the ball on the line, man. Threw it not only threw it out here, but out to the sideline where you couldn't get get to it. Mm-hmm. So I, I knew then that he was uh, he was special. Ah. And so you know I, what? R- real quick for us, me and Pat, you know, all we can do is watch highlights. But there are so many stories attached to what you just gave us in regards to his arm strength, like the power, the velocity in which he displayed and throwing the football. And that's something that's not really talked about with Terry Bradshaw. And also, too, his greatness is not talked about enough, in my opinion. Right, right. I think he's one of the more underappreciated quarterbacks to ever lace up his cleats in the National Football League to be a Hall of Famer first ballot to have four championships and just the consistency in which he displayed uh, clearly kind of goes unnoticed a little bit. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not surprised to hear you say, say that, but I just validate some of the things that I I've heard and also seen as well. Yeah. He's a great competitor to also. Yeah. My question for you, Donnie, obviously like Matt talked about alluded to, and um, not, not a minute ago, uh, a minute ago, how in the seventies, how, you know, Terry won so many championships and his game has not been talked about a lot. But I, my question is, what quarterbacks, not only in today's game, but in the 20th century as well, remind you of Terry Bradshaw? Because I haven't had an opportunity to watch him live. All we had the opportunity was to watch him, his highlights. So what quarterbacks in the 20th and the 21st century that reminds you, because I'm sure you still watch football, remind Absolutely. you of Terry uh, Bradshaw? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of any other than John Elway. <laughs> wow! Wow! I mean, I, mean uh, I played against Elway it, it, when he. It, I was getting ready to, to uh, about to retire, but I played against Elway. But man, I uh, him and uh, another arm strength guy, uh, Joe Gillum. We didn't we didn't mention him too. From Joe from Gillum, State. yeah, yes. I heard I heard about but, Joe. But, he had a rifle of an arm. It's arm wasn't big as this pin right here, but the, the, man, he <laughs> he could throw the ball. Um, I think I think Brad with his arm strength back in the early seventies. I don't I don't think another quarterback had that type of uh, arm strength mm-hmm. in in mm-hmm. the seventies. Because I, I play against a lot a lot of guys, uh, Kenny Anderson with Cincinnati that, that had a yep. pretty strong arm, but 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 Brad Brad Did you miss Dan? 
Yeah, Dan Marino. No, I, I play against Dan. Okay. Uh, oh. But he, 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 no, no. <laughs> Terry was okay. like that? Because everybody was talking yeah, about yeah, how yeah. strong Dan, yeah, but, Dan Marino. Yeah. Marino, Marino. Marino had the quick release. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see what I'm saying? He had the quick release and he, he can get the ball out quick and and, and before you rea- can react. But Brad, he just, you just wind up and just throw it. I mean, ah. uh, when you when you when you can throw the ball seventy yards and it don't leave him strain or, or, or hurt your arm, man, that's yep. that's that's great. And he put some respect on Terry Bradshaw's name, man. The man was a beast, man, beast, beast. Another great beast player. you had the luxury of playing with, two time Defensive Player of the Year, me, Joe me. Green. What's me. the most amazing thing your eyes witness Joe Green do on the football field? Uh, no, M- Mr. Green. Mr. Green. Yeah, Mr. Green. Mr. Green. <laughs> Mr. Green. I never call him Joe. I never call him me. I, yeah, I was, even to this day? I, I talk, Even to this day, I, I call him right before we went up to Melsman in May. Yeah. I, I, said, I, I said, hello, uh, Mr. Green. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, where most, you know you, that's where you know you're special, right? It's exactly. The most amazing play I've seen him make. Yeah, you know, I heard about Joe Green when I got up there and on the news and everything. I said, man. This joke ain't mean, man. It can't, uh, mean Joe Green. That's all I heard about. Yeah, we were playing Cleveland. He started to rush to quarterback, and you remember the the the, the zone blitz, the, the quarterback, it, it, the lineman the drop back on, in the in the zone. Yeah, he he saw he couldn't get there, so B Mac he you know he just dropped back in the zone. He dropped back in the linebacker position, intercepting the ball, running down the sideline to score. He saw he couldn't make it, so he allowed it back to JT Thomas, and JT mm. went in and scored the touchdown. I said, "Okay, Mister Green, you, 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 you're the man." <laughs> <laughs> man, Joe Green been one of the best to ever do it, man. I'm oh my that. goodness! I, I, I said, I have no doubts now. You, you're living up to all the media. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, we since we're going down memory lane, and that's when you first got into the league. I want to take you down when you was kind of on your way out of uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers when Rob Woodson came uh, came about. Yep. Give us a little glimpse of some stories, what you saw on what uh, what the future could bring for the the now Hall of Famer. Hey, man, Rob Woodson was incredible. I, I mean, uh, this guy had more talent. God had given him more talent than anybody I've ever, ever seen, man. Mm. Rod would stand up, backpedal, standing straight up. You're supposed to be leaning <laughs> over in a position so you can drive and go yeah. one way or the other. He was, he was backpedaling like this. Got himself in position. The guy ran out now, and he knocked the ball down. Wow. I, 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 you know, I told him, I said, I said, Rod, come here. That's it. If you if you just been down a little bit, you know you gonna set the ball and go eighty yards. He said, oh, "Okay, okay, I, I, I do I do that." But he, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he Rob was he's very talented. As a matter of fact, that we, we were roommates on 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 the road for uh-huh. a little bit his rookie year. They put him in in our, in our, in our room, but uh, we roomed together. And but he was uh, he was outstanding athlete, man. You know he also returned punts also. Yeah, yeah. You might not know that, <laughs> but uh, he was an incredible athlete. Was he the fastest player you you you've been around on the football field that you've seen uh, compete against? Was he the fa- was he the fastest guy at that time? Yes. Uh, wow. At, at 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 that time, with the, to be as big as he was, and 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 uh, I didn't think he was he could run that fast, man. But it, Rod can move. Yeah. And speaking talk- of how fast, yeah, speaking of how fast Rod was, we had some great conversations with him. What is the craziest thing that you've seen Rod do with the ball in his hands? Like, like split like some some miraculous tackles that you thought that he was gonna get tackled, just tight rope in the sideline. What is one of the things that showed off Rod's speed? Oh, yeah, like I said, he's a power returner. I, I think he turned he turned a couple of punts for touchdown. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't think he could. I didn't think he, he could do it, but man, he got in there, boom, 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 and when he hit the sideline, you get it. It, it was kind of wow. like when we were playing the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs. Uh, no, but we had played the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs in my rookie year. We beat them. OJ Simpson came back to Pittsburgh, 
and gained 202 yards against us. Ooh. He, Ooh. he, we was in a, it was a third and about three, and our defensive coordinator called goal line blitz and on our minus 30 yard line. Uh, I, I a goal line blitz on a. I looked, yeah, I looked at Lambert. I said, I said, Lambert, we can't run this defense because if, if he hit it, boom, 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 he's gone. He showed up, he <laughs> run the defense. I said, okay. <laughs> boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And, 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 and look, he was going down this way. I had the angle on him. I was just cruising. I said, I ain't, ain't no way to run back. I ain't never, never run, run me. I yeah. was cruising. I didn't want him to cut back. Man, look, look, look. He came <laughs> And I, I declare, man, if I would have kept running, I would have torn my ligaments. I felt my ligaments. <laughs> That's in how my fast knee. OJ was? I felt my ligaments in my knee, so I pulled off. That's the OJ was that the fast? That's, that was that was the truth. <laughs> so Donnie, you telling me you had the angle. I had the angle. <laughs> you he would said, open up. I, anymore. And, I, and I was jogging over to make stuff. sure he you don't want to cut back. <laughs> you know what he said in the newspaper the next morning? He, 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 he said. <laughs> He said, uh, uh, news, <laughs> news report actually, did you think about cutting back? He said, there ain't no way. I knew anybody going to catch. My mom's gone. <laughs> I'm OJ. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he ran he, he ran the, the fourth leg of the Olympics. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Four, yeah, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Wow. <laughs> Man. So, oh, yeah, that, that was, that was my OJ story. Another year, he would have tore a ligament, man. Oh, man, that, hey, that's the speed right there because, <laughs> heck, you was a heck of an athlete. Yes, yes, yes. I said, oh, man, I said, wow. I said, I, uh, you got my respect. Juice. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I call him Juice, right? Uh, speaking of another legendary back, walk us through your famous hit on Earl Campbell and how that tackle has lived throughout the years. Well, he he, he, the was having, he he was he was beginning to have a good day on, on us, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and we had to stop it. I remember, and it was kind of like a toss play, and he broke out and he cut back. Yep. And, and Mike Wagner came up, and he turned him back to me, and then he 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 gave Mike the spin move, uh -huh. and then I I call, I call him in the spin move, man. And you put that helmet on that rib too. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, this yeah. It, that was, that was it. That was the rim <laughs> shot. He laid down for a minute. He laid down for a minute. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that was like the third turnover in the same in the in that quarter you guys created. Yeah. Now we, we need we needed that need that play at that time. How powerful was Earl though? Like because it looked like his oh, legs were like goodness, man, super man. powerful. Here, here's here's another uh, male blunt story for you. Yeah. So I met Earl in the Pro Bowl, who was playing uh, in the AFC Pro Bowl, and then the year we came back and played them down in Houston. So in you know, pregame, you know, he came over to acknowledge uh, me, and and uh, we was sit we were sitting down talking. So and then he stood up over there, and I was and Mel walked in. He was in the in the door, and Mel, look at my, this right here, and he peeked down that down there. I didn't want to ask him then when I was talking to him. I said, but when he left, I said, man, what were you looking at? He said, he said, Dad, I was trying to find a, I was trying to find a soft spot to hit Earl. I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, I've I've seen highlights his, of Earl. His thighs, man, was that oh my goodness. <laughs> I've never seen a man thighs that big, man. I was trying wow. to find a soft spot, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, speaking of soft spots, what was your soft spot for the game? Like, because you played, what, 12 plus years in the National Football League where I feel like it was no holes bars in, in the game. So what was your love? What kept you going to continue to play the game? It, was it to be known as one of the greats? Was it? to to for for the money like what was it because it's always a different niche for the guys who have the gold jacket so i want to know what was it for you um uh, i always been kind of driven uh, it, um and and with um had it just had an extra dose of perseverance of not mm -hmm. giving up um i was down in Orlando, florida uh, uh last week and one of my friends I went to school with, uh, Sugar Ray Greer, he gave me a hat. 
He said, be great. He says, be great on there. It was black and gold, too. He, he made it up for me. He, he said, it has be great on there. So I asked him, I texted him, I said, I said what's the significance of that uh, statement? He, he said, Dan, look, every, everyone can't be great, but you also can, you can give 100% effort to being great. Got it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so I said, I said, oh, okay. He said, you're going to get a lot of conversations about that hat you're wearing because people are going to ask you about it. So, but, so I think just having the gift of hanging in there, persevering, giving 100% or whatever I did, like on special team, I wasn't the fastest guy, but nobody could ever beat me down on the kickoff. No one ever. One there you go, right there. That's one so, two. so. I think that in the in the love of the game, the I, I, I wanted to be a coach, so I wanted to stu- I, I like to study and prepare, and I think that uh, really helped me and motivated me also. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about Super Bowl thirteen, right? A monument, monumental ball game, the Steelers versus the Cowboys. What was at stake in that ball game? Because if my memory serves me correctly, both teams had two Super Bowls at that time. And of course, the Cowboys were, you know, trying to uh, earn their claim as the team of the 70s. And same could be said for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But, you know, the game within the game, we know it was a huge game Super Bowl. But was there anything extra at stake knowing that you were going against the Cowboys? Because clearly what happened in the 70s with you guys and the Cowboys have Mm -hmm. paved the way for what is currently happening in regards to the prestige that both organizations currently have in the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys. But that Super Bowl 13 was huge for both organizations. So was there anything, you know, at stake outside of the obvious in winning a championship? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my partner, Mel Blunt, didn't like the fact that they were calling the Dallas Cowboys the American team. The, mm-hmm. the, they're American team. American team. America's team, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, hey, wait, real quick before you hit on that, but wasn't that was supposed to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? And I think uh, uh, Mr. Rooney was like, "No, nah, we the Pittsburgh Steelers." Is there is that true? I, I, I didn't hear it that way, but I know Mel Mel Blunt was upset about it. Okay, it, 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 they ain't not going American team. We're gonna show them who the American team is. We're the team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so we were fired up. <laughs> Because they got all the publicity like they do now. Yeah, <laughs> you know yep. they, they, they don't they don't they don't they don't win. You know, you, <laughs> now they weren't in playoffs. Is that correct? <laughs> say, but they get all the publicity. Piece. So they, yeah, they were the same that, back that, that, that the They were talking <laughs> about Dallas Cowboys, Roger Starbuck, and Tony Dorsett. Yeah, and they, they mean defense, and, and we we kind of like the second fiddle, man. And I said, okay, we, we we'll just wait. We just wait till game time. Mm-hmm. And, and matter of fact, during the week, during the week, Chuck Noah had to stop practice. Why? We got so we got it got so aggressive. We got so aggressive against our offense. He 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 shut practice down. Whoa! <laughs> he said, okay. "Come on off." And then and then and then uh, John Stallworth and, M- and Mel Blunt got in a fight during <laughs> practice. During practice, it, uh, it all beat him on something. Mel came back and, and threw some dirt in, in his face and his eye. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck talking about Chuck, Oh, that's it. Take it in. <laughs> Mel threw dirt and John <laughs> Star in his eye. Man, oh, in his eye. You, you, Star got a very light voice and saw somebody. <laughs> Dog, did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, yeah, hey, I mean, I'm trying not to let. I said, <laughs> I said, man, no, I, I didn't see it, Star. <laughs> oh, man. I, I said, what did he do? He, he picked up the dirt and he threw it right in my eye, man. I said, man, I, just, I don't remember Mel doing anything like that to anybody. Oh, man. Install this one. <laughs> man, Chuck, stop practicing. Oh, man. Hey. Hey, that's a that's- story of a lifetime right there, man. Hey, don't, don't get, hey, don't catch a pass on Mel. You might get a face full of dirt. Yeah, that's right. In your <laughs> right. Eye. Hey, right, right, exactly. <laughs> Bad. Hey, 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 Mac, it wasn't no artificial turf back then. No, that <laughs> no. was real dirt. 
That was <laughs> real good. Because that was in Miami. That Super Bowl was in Super Bowl 13 yeah. was in Miami, right? I was in Miami. It sure was. Yeah. That was that's real dirt right there, Pat Peak. <laughs> Mel didn't tell us that story. <laughs> Wait, hey, we talked back hey, to him. Matt, uh, I will tell you, boy, your 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 memory and your football trivia is is definitely one of the best I've been around. Hands down. I know super, my Super Bowl sites. I know Super Bowl sites. I know where they played, what happened. Real quick, real quick. I don't even know this. But what was what Super Bowl 17? Who played? The I don't know. That's what I'm I asking get, you. I, I need Eric. If, if Eric give me the teams, I can tell you where it was at. Eric. Sorry, Eric, Donnie. Super Bowl 17. Talk to us, Eric, Talk to Eric us, give Eric. me the teams. While Super we wait Bowl on 17. Eric. Uh, Dolphins, the Dolphins Red and the Redskins. Skins. That was in Pasadena. Ooh. Correct. Correct. Don't stop trying me, man. That's what I do, man. It's Pasadena. Miami had on all white uniforms. Uh, Washington had on, of course, the yellow pants, you know, home jerseys with the uh, red helmet, gray face mask. That was in Pasadena. Okay. I see you, man. Ain't too many. And anybody listening to this podcast, if you got a favorite host from another (laughs) podcast that want to battle me with football (laughs) trivia, Super Bowl trivia, run it. Pat P, don't worry about it, baby. I I carry us on this one right here. Hey, I, I, I know you. Hey, I know you got us, Coach. I know I you got carry us on this right here, man. Got no question. Got I, real I, quick. I, yeah. Go ahead, Matt. What you yeah. got? But before we we transition, man, four Super Bowls, Pat P, Donnie yep. Shell, four Super Bowls in six seasons, which is a dynasty. Clearly, oh right? That's a dynasty. But at what point? As you got to the 1980s, did you realize that era of dominating football for the Pittsburgh Steelers was kind of going in a different direction? When the Steel Curtain began to retire and leave, mm. that's that's what we really felt it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we had some good defensive linemen, but not, not like uh, Joe, Ernie, uh, Holmes, Dwight White, L.C. Greenwood. I mean, they, they those guys... Uh, they're very dominant, and LC don't get the credit that he deserves. Yeah. Need to be in the Hall of Fame, no question. Um, uh, he played the we played the four three, and you know uh, he was very stout against the run, which many people don't know. He get a lot of credit for his sacks, but they couldn't run the ball over there, man. Mm. So, um, so when we begin to lose our, our, our defensive linemen, that it tells you right now for all our coaches that are watching us or listening to us, how important the guys on the front, Where how start? important they are. <laughs> Where it start? We all DBs here. Where does it start? It started the trenches. If you want to help the secondary, start at the foundation first, the trenches. That's right. That's where you start at. You start in the trenches, man. That inf- The information you just shared with us, clearly is a coaching me- uh, uh it should be a coaching mechanism in regards to what you're trying to build and how you want to build you start in the trenches we got dominant defensive yes. linemen the second level and the third level guys gonna follow suit so Amen. man man it's, he said a mouthful and Donnie, right and Donnie, before we get to our superlatives what was it like getting the call as you just alluded to yeah. a player that should have you know who should have been who should be in the hall of fame you waited for a long time like for you because i asked all the guys that's in the hall on our podcast what was it like getting the call no matter when you got it but what was it like hey got hey donnie this is a question only for pat p because i ain't gonna get that type call but (laughs) pat p gonna get that call and I'm gonna get the call kind of from Pat P. So Pat, this is because he's gonna get that same call you got. Hey, Amen. I, I agree. Yeah, so that he gotta ask, ask that question, but I'll get the call from Pat P. Uh, my wife said I talk all the time. Uh-huh. My wife told me that I, all the time. Too. Yeah, yeah, my, 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 <laughs> so when I got the call, I, I I couldn't express myself, man. You were speechless? Spe- I was speechless. Mm. Speechless. All I can do is say, I appreciate it. I mean, the words wouldn't come. I said, I've never been lost for words. My wife said, you've never been lost for words. I was lost for words. <laughs> because mm-hmm. it, it's, and two, um, I'm glad I waited because it's taught me so much about being patient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And waiting for what things that, it, good things are, are are good to wait on. Mm-hmm. 
Don't mm. you appreciate them so much, much more when you finally get it? When you finally get it, yeah. Right. So uh, I was, I was, I was very appreciative, man. I just um, uh, start crying and thanking the Lord for uh, answering my prayers, and I was waiting on Him to answer my prayers, man. So that's what He did. Yeah, mm. and Don, it was it tough for you coming down with the selection on the presenter? the person that was going to present you into the hall, was it, was it tough? Cause I know there've been so many great people in your life and your football life that helped you get to where you was or uh, to where you are right now, which mm-hmm. is football heaven. So was it tough narrowing it down to who you wanted to present you into the hall? Yes. When, when, when you think about it and think about my teammates, that's the first uh, uh, people I thought about. And then I, I remember what Joe Green said. He, he, uh, I said, I said, hey, Mr. Green, how are you, Mr. Green, today? I called him on the phone. He, he, he said, you know what, Joe? I, I said, what? He said, about this Hall of Fame. You, you know it's all about the family. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's for the family. I said, you get all this other thing. I, I said, you know, I was thinking about it. I said, you, you, you're right, Mr. Green. <laughs> So mm-hmm. when he said that, and I started thinking, I said, well, it has to be my, my oldest child, April Nicole Shell. We, we call her Principal Shell. Mm-hmm. She's a principal at um, Summit Middle School in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. But that, that, was, that was my choice. Uh, after Joe, uh, we talked about that and had a discussion about that. Is she, wow. uh, is, uh, is she your oldest? She's, she's my older, old, oldest. So- and what was that moment like? Because did she watch you play ball like at any point in your career? No, I don't think April was the oldest. She remembered just a little bit. She don't. She don't remember a, a whole a whole lot. So what was that moment like? Then having your oldest daughter, like me and Joe Green, Mister Joe, Mister Green said, you know, it's all about family. What was that moment like? Watching your daughter present you in the hall then. Oh, it, it was awesome, man! And then, then too, to to watch her there, and then to see it back on tape. Yeah, I mean, mm. she said some things that we we hadn't even talked discussed about. She 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 wrote the speech. She wrote the introduction. Mm. And she said she come in. She made this comment, and it, it, it was showing highlights when she was talking. She said, "Notice how light on his feet he is." I, said, I asked mm. her after that. <laughs> I got home and I, asked, I said. Where'd you get that statement? Where'd you get that statement from? He said, "Dad, just check it. Check it out. Look at look. I'll look at the fence. Look look at you. I mean, right, you, right. You, you like you like. I never even. <laughs> wow. So, so those comments and things of that nature, and then when uh, my buddy, my one of my best friends, John Starr, would come up and talk about, hey, Shell, she knocked it out. She did you well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and how did it feel for you when you finally got into the hall? To have so many of your teammates that were already there to support you, because if I'm not mistaken, and I don't know, is there another organization that have more Hall of Famers in Pittsburgh? Well, probably so, but you know, we got a lot. But just having all your guys there with you, and, and, and that's the main thing. That's 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 really why I wanted to get it get in. I wanted to be with my teammates, man. Yeah, so that was one more chance uh, for me to be with my my teammates, and it was it was just an awesome time, man. Oh, man, that's great. Before we transition to superlatives, tell us a little bit about, because as we talk to you, I see your background. It has the Donnie Shell Scholarship Foundation. Tell us a little bit about your foundation. Donnie Shell Scholarship Foundation it started about seven years ago. Um, I realized that uh, young people was kind of like me when I came up. With, uh, my parents couldn't afford to pay for my college tuition. I ended up getting an athletic scholarship. So we started the Don and Shell Foundation to help the parents who are uh, needed financial assistance mm. uh, in, in uh, helping, their, helping their son or daughter uh, complete their degree. Um, we give GAP scholarship. We fill in the financial gaps. Uh, we give uh, scholarship for books, computers. We give scholarships. We support the, the Bulldog Closet, the Care Closet, where if you need food, if, if you need deodorant, you need personal uh, things to help you. I always, I always just run out of deodorant when I'm in college. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's, what, that's what we do. Um, it's really been a blessing uh, to give back and help other people. 
Um, and we've been doing some meet and greets and some lunch and learns. And people uh, begin to find out about what we're doing, and they're uh, really starting to support us. So if anybody wants to support us, they can go to the Donna Shell Scholarship Foundation.com. The okay. DSSF dot com. Donnie, before we let you go, we're going to transition to the superlative part of our show. It's like a two minute drill, right? You're in the secondary. They need a field goal to win. Rapid fire, no huddle. They throw in the football. First question I got for you. Mount Rushmore of all time Steeler players. Top Man, four. Of them, Matt. No, 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 no. Pat P, this is this is no they got the score. He he used to pressure he in the Hall of Fame. He got 51 picks. This is list. <laughs> he had a pressure. Question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Maybe Mount Rushmore it. of all time Steeler greats. Your four best players to ever play for the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. Mount Rushmore, top four. Donnie Shell's list. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Donnie. Oh, no. Joe, yeah, we're Joe, asking you. Yeah. yeah. Joe, Joe Green. Joe, Joe Green. Mr. Green. Jack Lambert. Jack Lambert. You mean defense or offense? No, any position. It can any be position, inside. okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, John Stallworth. That, that's that's, that's uh, easy. three. Got one more. Uh, Lynn Swan. Okay. You got Joe Green, Lambert. Lambert. Stallworth, Stallworth and Swan. Stallworth. And Swan. No Mel Blunt? Uh, uh, no Donnie Shell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey. This, this is your list. This is your list. <laughs> this is your list. Our comment section gonna be rattling, boy. Gonna be shaking like a salt. Yeah, that's, that, hey, but Mac, like I said, it's, it's too many of them. It's a lot. Hey, hey, it's well, I know. Yeah, okay. it. He got yeah. fifty-one picks. He in the Hall of Fame. Oh, he can great. handle it. Yeah, he, he put his helmet in 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 in, 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 uh, in uh, uh uh uh. What's the right? I'm having a brain fart. The running back we just talked about from Houston, uh, Earl Campbell. He put his Earl. helmet in Earl Campbell rib. He can handle this. Yeah, Earl Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm going to one notch you on this one, Mac, on, my, got, on my question. What? Who are your top five HBCU players, players ever? Oh, wow. That, that, <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, that ain't yeah. yeah. Come That's on, pressure. man. You, you, All the time? You, you, you put, you put it like in the Hall of Fame. He can handle the pressure, baby. Let's go. He got 51 <laughs> picks. <laughs> uh, Deacon Jones. Ooh. Uh huh. And you can put yourself in this list as well. Yeah, if you want to, it's your list. Oh, I got some. I, I, I got a lot. I got a lot more guys. You got Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones. Um, Harry Carson. Okay, uh, your teammate. Yeah. Mel Blunt. Mel Blunt. I, 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 I got it back. Yeah, he's in number three. You got two more. You got two more. You got two more. John Stallworth. Stallworth. Oh, that's four. You got one more. I got one more? Yeah. yeah five. One more. Five. Uh, Robert Brazil. Oh, now, okay, for our listeners and our viewers. They might not know a little bit about Robert Brazil, but why did he make it? I list? don't. In, why, inform. Why, who is inform. Robert Donnie. Oh, yeah. Oh, Robert Brazil. Robert Brazil was about 6'4", six, 6'4 four, six, four and a half, about 255, 260, and ran a 4'5", four, 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 40. I mean, he was outstanding. He can do it all. Cover you, rush the passer. Uh, he was just an outstanding um Individual and outstanding uh, athlete. Wait, so this you? Like he went linebacker. to. What Robert go to? It wasn't Jackson State, was it? I think it was Jackson State. It might have been. I think it was Jackson State. Yeah, it's Jackson State. My memory serves me correct. Jackson yeah, State. But, but when I remember Houston all that he he I mean he was outstanding man because he they put him out on gunner as a gunner to go cover the punts. Man, he was and six guess, four. Guess, guess who six. had to cover him? You did? You. 
So now how you gonna stop somebody six four two two uh, two sixty? And this joke, he outran me down the field. He didn't push you down. He just ran. You, he just he, he just ran around you. That's why you laughing, Fat Pete. Gone. What position did Robert play? Is what I'm trying to get. The linebacker. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but he was. He was. He could have been, he could have been and, a safety. Back. Yeah, back back in those days, you didn't have guys that big and that fast. So Robert Brazil, Mel Blunt, Stallworth, yeah, uh, and Deacon Jones, Deacon Jones, Jones. and who yeah. was the last one? Did I say Harry Carson? Harry Carson. Yeah, Harry, Harry Carson. Carson. Harry Carson. So you, so no, no Jerry Rice, no Walter Payton, uh, Richard Dent. Shannon Sharp, straight hand. It's, it's you, 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 you said five. I did say five, and this is your list. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is your list. So, yeah, hey, shout out to all the I, 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 I think they, they qualify. I think they, they qualify. They all qualify. Right. What you got, yeah, Pat? Oh, okay. Yes, I sir. will say now, Matt. Now, if, you, if, you, if, if you give me 10, I, I, I can you extend it. But then you're going to still have to leave somebody off. Somebody's going to be mad regardless. I know. I right. Think about Harold Carmichael. No. Oh, man. Yeah, but this hey, your list. Matt. What you got? No, that's my, yeah, that's old, my list. Yeah, old timers always have the best comebacks. Oh, fact, <laughs> no question. That's gonna be me and you one day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it gonna be me and you one day. All right, I got another good one for you. Favorite Super Bowl victory out of the four? Without you got question. four. You got Without four question. championship yeah. rings. Oh, right? That's you easy. Oh. First one. The first one. Yeah. And, and you know why? Why? It's been 40 years since they won a championship, and to see Mr. Rooney's face glow like that, man, when you see that the the Super Bowl trophy is unbelievable. Wow! So Everybody I didn't know that. Everybody just off, and he was just up there, and, and and he didn't he didn't really want to take the trophy, but to see that this commitment of 40 years, man, of waiting. 40 years. It was a 40 year drought, and you guys broke it, and then you got you went and got three more. Amen. Wow. Mm. The and chief is what they used to call him. The, the chief. With the cigar. The with the stogie. Yeah. Good man. Uh, good man. Is it true? Is it true back in those days, y'all used to smoke cigarettes in the locker room during halftime and drink uh, beer? Yes, we had ashtrays on our locker. <laughs> they had them screwed into the locks out of the locker. I heard about that. I heard about that. Three Rivers, they said, used to yeah, have ashtrays. Fact, if, 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 if Rocket had been here, I would tell the Rocket story. Because my, oh, my locker was in between Rocket and Franco. And then he come in and doing halftime. Oh, yeah, we got to get going, man. Y'all got to stop and hold and give us the ball back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Rocky would come in and light a cig up. He would light one up. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I said, I, I'm a young guy. So I, I said, this is National Football League. <laughs> right. <laughs> what? What? He talk, they holding a, a conversation with you like it's normal. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, but they, 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 I got the whole and get us the ball back. I can't tell you we'll score. Man, <laughs> oh, my goodness. What about beer? They used to drink beer at halftime? No, not beer. No, no. But they'll smoke they a cig. The say that for the summer. They'll smoke a cig, though. <laughs> Them, I, boy, I can't. <laughs> and they brew. It's so bad. <laughs> Real quick. Yeah. Because our listening viewers, they may not understand this. We got nine Super Bowl appearances. Wow. No, I'm sorry. Six Super Bowl, seven Super Bowl appearances. No, we got more than seven. No. We got wow. more than seven. We, got, we won no. six, and we, oh, I'm, and, and no, we no, lost I'm, two. I'm it's about, nine. I'm just, lost the, two. I'm just talking about the players. I'm just talking about the players we have on the, on the podcast right now. Oh, yeah, we got, yeah, we got six. And you're going to get one this year that makes seven. That, yep. That'd be great. Yeah. So what was the robe scene like? Like, what, where did that robe come from, Mac, in the, in, in the last Super Bowl that y'all, what you mean? when y'all Cardinals in 09? I, I remember going back in the, uh, when I when I walk in the building every day, I see a six sign, shiny Lombardi uh, uh, in front of me. Yep. But I see this one particular one with all the guys in the locker room with robes on. Where did that come from? Oh, that, we had a robe. That was Detroit. That was oh, yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was yeah. Uh, Seattle. Yeah, it was Seattle. We had a we. I got a Super Bowl robe right now, still to this day. It, it's it's stitched in XL Super Bowl forty, and we all had robes. And a lot of guys were smoking cigars. I don't smoke, but they were smoking cigars, and we just wow. had a we had a Super Bowl robe. What kind of gifts y'all used to get back in the seventies? Gifts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't get no bag. You ain't get no goodie bag. 
Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't get no goodie bag? No. That was, so, <laughs> so the league I remember that, was back in the, that was back in the 70s, bro. Yeah, we got. I, I think we got it from the league or somebody. I, and also, too, we used to get individual gifts. Like, let's say if you wore Nike or you wore Reebok or you wore whatever, they'll give you individual gifts. But yeah, all of us got the Super Bowl robes. No, Y'all no, get no, no. I get no goodie bags. No, Donnie? no. Because I we got a Super Bowl, the, the, the ring. <laughs> <laughs> we got the ring too. Well, we got bag. I used to look well, forward man, to that goodie bag, huh? Yeah. Matt, if I if I can remember correctly, I haven't seen another team in a locker room with a robe on. You're right. Yeah, we all had robe. I got my Super Bowl robe right now. Next show, I might wear my robe, my Super Bowl robe. I was just curious. What the the what? Yeah, that, 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 that'd be something to talk about. Yeah, yeah. we used to wear a robe. Hey, how how was it for you, Dan Donnie? I'm gonna let you go, but it's not oftentimes we get a chance to talk to a guy who played in the '70s and dominated. How many? So you played in four Super Bowls, right? The majority of your Super Bowls were in Miami. Like, did you guys have opportunities to have, you know, hang out? Because I know when we got, when I played in three Super Bowls, our first three or four, three days were committed just to enjoying ourselves. I remember Bill Kyle told us when we got on our playoff run and we got to the Super Bowl, he said, whatever you guys were doing to up in this point, don't change it up now. Treat it as a normal week. So if you've been hanging out and you've been, you know, being disciplined, whatever the case may be, keep doing what you're doing. Because, you know, oftentimes people <laughs> get to the Super Bowl, they get tight. Right. You know what I mean? So, heck, for us, we was already on, on Skid Row to kind of say the least trying to get to the Super Bowl our first year. Man, we just was as relaxed as possible. So guys were coming together, having car at night, you know, going out to dinner. How was it for you guys when you were going to places like Miami to play against the Cowboys or whoever in the week of? Like, was the Super Bowl like a big event where they had different thing, activities for you guys like it is now? Uh, no. It, it, the, the biggest activity was the media day mm -hmm. for us. Um, and that was about it, man. You, you, you know, you went along, like you said, you, you, you try to be as, as relaxed as possible. Matter of fact, the first in Super Bowl nine, we played Minnesota. I think that's why we beat the Vikings. They were, they, that, that I was told, I'm told that they were up, really uptight and about the game and everything. They changed their routine. And Chuck told us, hey, let's go on out tonight. He literally, go, let's go out. Mm -hmm. Go he, must have, he trusted y'all. Yeah, for a couple of days, you just get y'all help. That's what he said. Just have fun. Uh huh. But you, you know, when when the coach tell you that, and guys went out, but nobody got in trouble. Nobody. Yep. Yeah, they came right back in. And matter of fact, they kept it probably came back in a little earlier than they were anticipating to cut them, them being back in. But uh, mm -hmm. we were always we was always relaxed. That's good. Um, yeah, so I think that really helped us. Well, heck, you helped us a lot today with educating us, informing us, and giving us some good stories. It's always great to have a living legend join us here. All things covered. Patrick Peterson, bribing fatty man, four time Super Bowl champion, five time Pro Bowler, four time All Pro, fifty one career interceptions, Pro Football Hall of Famer, the great Donnie Shell. Thank you so much, Mr. Shell. And of course, we got to get Rocky on. So we already got a story to throw at Rocky <laughs> in regards to uh, our conversation. He spoke. Was it? Was it a? Did they have Newports back in those days, or was it Marlboro? What, what kind of? What kind of they they both, of, both of them. <laughs> what was Boy, I, mean, I, wasn't, I wasn't smoke. I wasn't a smoker, but that. They smoked them. See, I bet y'all locker room was stink with them. See that cigarette smoke. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Boy. Hey, that tells me y'all are different type of athletes because you I don't think anybody could do that nowadays, man. How you guys rock and roll back then, man. Yeah, y'all was y'all was different. Yeah, we're a little different. Yeah, it was different. Different, different, times. different times. No question, different no question. Times. But Steeler Nation, I know you guys will enjoy this. Hey, you Donnie, guys. you blessed us real good, baby. Hey, we appreciate man. you. I appreciate you guys, man. Appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. Yes, I hopefully I see you in the near future. On, Absolutely.